Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Tyrone Power, David Niven, and Jane Greer in The Bishop's Wife. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Home again after an absence of a year and a half is one of America's favorite stars. And he's here tonight to lend an extra thrill to our holiday season. I mean, of course, Tyrone Power, who joins David Niven and Jane Greer in our Christmas present to you, the delightful play, The Bishop's Wife. Samuel Goldwyn's fine and sensitive screen production won your hearts as well as your applause. And those who saw the picture will have a special welcome tonight for David Niven, who plays his original screen role as the bishop. I'm sure most of you are quite busy these days with last-minute shopping and getting the house in order for the holidays, a time of year when you'll need plenty of Lux Flakes. In fact, there's a most unusual holiday use for Lux Flakes on your Christmas tree, which we'll tell you about later. Now the curtain for Act One of The Bishop's Wife, starring Tyrone Power as Dudley, David Niven as the Bishop, and Jane Greer as Julia. It's a late afternoon in December. In a rather shabby section of a large city, two old friends have an unexpected meeting. Julia, what a wonderful surprise, my dear, beautiful Julia. Professor Wotheridge, but what are you doing here? I'm about to negotiate the purchase of a Christmas tree. I didn't know you celebrated Christmas. I thought you had no religion. No, I don't, but I like a Christmas tree. Reminds me of my childhood. Can you imagine me ever having been a child? Uh, Tell me, how's Henry? Oh, he's, well, I suppose so tired and worried. You're raising money for the new cathedral, huh? Slow work, Professor. And you, how's your book coming? Oh, splendidly. Greatest history of Rome since Gibbons. I wish it weren't so late. The cathedral committee is meeting with Henry. I really should be there. Well, one of these days we'll have time for a nice talk again. Oh, here, here, for Henry's cathedral fund. This coin? It has very little value, I'm afraid. Just an old Roman coin. I picked it up years ago in Italy. Oh, it's a wonderful contribution. Nonsense. Might be called the widow's mite, only I'm not a widow... Julia, what's the matter? Nothing. Well, if Henry and I could only spend Christmas back here, where we were so happy, with you, with all our old friends. No, no, no. I'm sorry. It was really very childish of me. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye, Julia. Why, Professor, how good to see you again. Hmm? Who are you? And how well you look after all these years. Well... Don't you remember me? Well, let's see. It uh, it wasn't Vienna, was it? Vienna. Beautiful old Vienna. When I was lecturing on Roman history. And what splendid lectures they were. And what a one you were with the ladies. I fancy you remembering that. I, uh, I've been standing on the corner watching you, Professor. You and Julia. Well, you know Julia. In a way, yes. Uh, poor girl. She's unhappy? Yes. When were you in Vienna? Oh, many times. I, uh... I'm interested in Julia, Professor, and Henry. What seems to be their trouble? Oh, no special trouble, I imagine. Henry's a bishop now, hmm? Oh, yes, that used to be his church over there. St. Timothy's. Perishing from neglect. It's such a nice little church. Well, delighted to have seen you again, Professor. Strange. Unless I've completely lost my memory, I've never seen that fellow before in my life. Julia? I'm terribly sorry I'm so late, Henry. Has everyone gone? Yes, dear, some time ago. Not another argument, Henry. Mrs. Hamilton... Mrs. Wasn't... Hamilton is a selfish, vain old... She made it very clear, Julia. Either we build the cathedral the way she wants it, or it won't be built at all. Oh, what a ghastly meeting. You didn't give in to her. Indeed not. I made it very clear I have no intention of being strangled by her purse strings. Oh, Henry, I'm proud of you. I had the most unchristian impulse to take those blueprints and give her a good whack over a mink coat. I beg your pardon, Bishop. 
Yes, Miss Cassaway? Mr. Trevor's on the phone. Tell him the bishop will call him back, please, after dinner. Yes, Mrs. Brown. Henry, what's happened to you, to us, to our marriage? That's a strange question to ask. No, we used to be so happy. We used to make other people happy. Henry, that was your gift. You're no financier and you're no promoter. Kowtowing to people, flattering them, begging them. It's got to be done, Julia. I want this cathedral to stand like a great beacon. I want his light to shine. I want... Yes, 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 Henry. Oh, here. Here's a contribution I collected. Oh, what is it? It's an old Roman coin from Professor Wetheridge. Oh, what does he think I can do with it? Well, it's a beginning. Now all you need is just another four million dollars. Julia, don't be flippant about this. Well, if dinner's ready, let's have it over with. I've got a lot of work to do tonight. The soup's very good, Matilda. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Brown. Oh, Julia, I'm... I'm sorry. I was so thoughtless just now. I was... I was just thinking, tomorrow, uh, perhaps we could spend the day together. Henry. Call on the professor, maybe. Have lunch at Michelle's. Michelle's. Oh, it's been years since we've been there. Oh, Please, forgive me. Yes, Miss Cassaway? Well, I've been trying to explain to Mr. Trevor, but he simply insists upon talking to you. Oh, Julia. He's on the cathedral committee, isn't he? Well, go ahead, dear. You'd better talk to him. Yes, Mr. Trevor. Very well, Mr. Trevor. I'll be there. 10.30 tomorrow morning. Good night. You may as well go home now, Miss Cassaway. Oh, but there's still a great deal of work to do, sir. You're a secretary, not a machine. Now run along. Thank you. Oh, and don't forget, you have a speech to make tomorrow at the Junior Assembly. Oh, no. What time? It's a luncheon meeting, one o'clock. Good night, Bishop. Good night, Miss Cassaway. Oh, God, what am I to do? Can't you help me? Can't you tell me? Oh, God, please, please help me. Yes? Good evening. Oh, what can I do for you? That isn't the question, Henry. Oh, well, what is it? What can I do for you? Look, I'm afraid uh, you, you must telephone for an appointment. I'm in the middle of dinner. I know, Henry. But you asked for help, you know. I asked... Who told you I asked for help? Well, you are known to be a good man and you were heard. I was instructed to come here in answer to your prayer. Who are you? I'm an angel. I beg your pardon? An angel. An angel. I knew it. I knew it. I've been working too hard. No, 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 no. Don't be alarmed. I, I know it's hard to believe even for you, but this is my district and I... Do you mind if I sit down? No, 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 please. Do. And now let's see. You have some problems concerning the building of a new cathedral. Yes. Oh, here. Here's a picture of it. Beautiful. Magnificent. Well, Henry, do you believe I am what I say I am? Well, how can I... Nothing but your word for it. But you are a bishop. You, of all people, can trust the word of an angel. Well, what do you propose to do? Perform a miracle? If necessary. Oh, why don't you? Why don't you create a cathedral with a wave of your hand? Oh, no. no. You wouldn't want me to do that, would you? How would you explain it? Well, I... Uh, Henry, well... is anything wrong? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a caller. Oh, how have you been, Julia? I'm Dudley. Henry is engaging me to help him with his work. You mean you're going to be his assistant? That's it, exactly. I'm going to try to help Henry to get some relaxation. Oh, that's just what I've been praying for. Oh, you too. Henry, I'm so relieved, dear. Where do you come from, Dudley? Oh, all around. Julia, this man claims that he's an... I, uh, I've been doing social service work downtown. Uh, Julia, if you don't mind, I must talk to this gentleman alone. We were just having dinner, Dudley. Won't you join us? Well, that's very kind of you, but I really must go. I'll see you both in the morning. In the morning? Oh, yes. Bright and early. I'll wait in the dining room, Henry. Good night. Oh, good night, Julia. Are you, uh, are you sure you're an angel? <laughs> oh, I, I know it isn't easy, Henry, but you've just got to take me on faith. Yes, but for how long? How, how long will it take? Until you can utter another prayer and say that you have no further need of me. Then I'll be gone and forgotten. Julia's waiting, Henry. Yes, I know, but I still don't understand. Dudley. Dudley, where are you? Dudley. <laughs> You look so pale. I, uh, oh, do I? Sit down, dear. Henry, what's the rest of Dudley's name? I don't know. Why, Henry, you're trembling. I'm not surprised. A lesser man would, would quiver. Well, you'll feel better after you've eaten. Matilda's baked your favorite dessert, dear. Angel food cake. <laughs> Henry, Henry, what is it? 
Oh, good morning, Miss Gasaway. Hi. I was just in your study, sir. There's a man in there. He says he's your new assistant. Oh, then he did come back. He says we're going to be working together. Yes, there doesn't seem much I can do about it, sir. Well, run along to the office, Miss Gasaway. I'll, I'll go in and see you. Yes, sir. Well, here I am, Henry. Completely at your service. Now, it may interest you to know I didn't sleep 20 minutes last night. I don't mind adding I'm, I'm in a highly nervous condition. Oh, well, then, the first thing we'll have to... Oh, good morning, Julia. Good morning, Dudley. It's a lovely day. Lovely. Henry and I are going out together. Oh, Julia, I'm terribly sorry, but we can't. I, I got to see Mr. Trevor at 10.30, and, and after that, there's the junior assembly. But you promised, Henry. Yes, I, I know I did. But, well, Dudley could represent you at those meetings, couldn't he? Uh, could I? Well, that, that's out of the question. They expect me. It would never do if I sent an, an, an assistant. Uh, excuse us, Dudley. I want to speak to my wife. Oh, of course. In the hall, dear. Julia, you see, the trouble is... Well, that man in there... Oh, I can't explain. You needn't try, Henry. Oh, but you mustn't think... This is the way it is. This is the way it always will be. Well, I'll tell Matilda she can have the day off for Christmas shopping. I'll take care of Debbie. I'll see you at dinner, Henry. What are you doing, Dudley? I'm just looking through your files, Henry. Well, I see that Mrs. Hamilton has pledged a million dollars to the cathedral fund. But she hasn't sent her check. Well, never mind that file. That's work for a bookkeeper, not an... A, a, work for a bookkeeper. Well, so you're beginning to believe in me. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you came from or who sent you. I only wish you'd make haste. Because the cathedral must be built? And obviously that's the most important thing. Or because Julia must be happy. It's, it's going to be difficult to help you, Henry, unless I'm sure of what it is that you really want. Yes, well, I, I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. Mr. Trevor likes punctuality. Well, run along, Henry. This file's in an awful mess. I, I think I'll reorganize it. I still think you're wasting your time on unimportant details. Well, nothing's unimportant, Henry. Remember, we're interested in even the lowliest sparrow. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. De -de 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 -de. Oh, hello, Debbie. Well, come in, come in. How did you do that just now? All those cards in Daddy's file? You just waved your hand and they all jumped out of the box and jumped in again. Oh, that. Well, it's just my system of rearranging card files. Do it again. Some other time, hmm? You're Dudley, aren't you? Mommy told me. Mommy says you're very nice. Well, that's extremely kind of Mommy. She said that maybe with you here, maybe we'll get to see Daddy once in a while. Yes, maybe we will. Debbie, that'll be enough out of you, dear. Come along. Yes, Mommy. Oh, so you're going out? To huh? the park. I'm going to play in the snow. Goodbye, Dudley. Goodbye, Debbie. Have a good time. Julia. Dudley, I didn't expect to see you here. Oh, I often walk in the park. Well, Debbie seems to be having a fine time. Regular snowbird. Aren't you supposed to be working? I always take a walk before lunch. Relaxing, you know. Oh, I wish you could convince Henry of that. Uh, speaking of lunch, Julia, I thought I'd go to Michelle's. Ever been there? Michelle's? Oh, yes, we used to go there often, years what? ago. How about going there today? You and I to Michelle's? Oh, no, no, I couldn't. Why not? Well, oh, surely you don't think Henry would mind. Oh, no, no, it isn't that. It, well, you see, Matilda's off shopping, and I'll have to look after Debbie. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. But here's Matilda now. Hello, Mrs. Brown. Matilda. I just thought, Mrs. Brome, I just thought that if you wish, I'll take Debbie home. But, Matilda, you're shopping. Oh, I finished it. I finished it so quick. It was just like a miracle. Oh, you don't say. I thought Debbie might like to go home and make Christmas cookies. Oh, I'm sure she'd love to, but... Well, then, Mrs. Brome, I'll just go and get her. Well, Julia, Michelle's? I, I think that would be very nice. Good. Dudley. Yes? Just a minute ago... When you said you saw Matilda. Yes. Oh, it's nonsense. Oh, what's nonsense? You were looking the other way when you said you saw her. Oh, I was? I mean, I mean, I thought you were. How silly of me. Wait here, Dudley. I'll say goodbye to Debbie. Julia. Julia, I'm home, Julia. Why, Bishop, I... 
I thought you were out for lunch. Well, I cancelled my appointment, Matilda. Are Mrs. Brougham and Debbie here? Well, Debbie's upstairs, sir. But Mrs. went out to lunch with Mr. Dudley. Oh, well, she said... Uh, Dudley? Oh, why, yes, sir. I-, I thought you knew, sir. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, dear. I'm so glad you knew about Michelle's, Dudley. It's so nice to be back here again. Only... Only? Well, you seem to know so much. (laughs) Makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, in that case, I'm sorry I ever learned anything. You have memories of this place, haven't you? Yes. As a matter of fact, it was in this restaurant that Henry asked me to marry him. Yes, I know. You know. I I mean, I know how you must feel. (laughs) There's a fortune teller over there. You care to have your palm read? No, thank you. Would you? No, I know too much about myself as it is. And I? I know so little about myself. Oh, really? May may I look at your hand? Can you tell fortunes, too? It's not too difficult. Well, what do you see? (laughs) I never noticed, Julia. Your eyes are green. I see a great deal of happiness. I see a woman who's adored. I see a rich, full life. Do you see Henry's new cathedral? Uh, no. No, I don't. And Debbie? No need to worry about her. She'll be like you, Julia. She'll have youth and beauty no matter how old she lives to be. I wish I could believe you. You may. (laughs) You haven't looked at my hand once. I simply don't know what to think of you, Dudley. Whether you're serious or... Oh, no. Well? That table over there. No, no, don't look. Three ladies, all on the cathedral committee. They're simply glaring at me. Well? He saw you holding my hand. Oh. Well, then, if you'll excuse me, I'd better do something about it, hadn't I? What did you do to them? Now they're smiling at me. Look, look, they're waving. Well, wave back, Julia. Oh, yes. I didn't do anything to them. Just introduced myself, chatted a moment. They're really very friendly, Julia. They promised to drop by our table a little later. Dudley... May I make an understatement? Oh, please do. You are a very unusual man. I'll let you in on something, Julia. You're quite right. Before our stars return with Act Two of The Bishop's Wife... Here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. John, I have wonderful news for movie fans. Jean Tierney is back in her first picture since her new daughter was born. 20th Century Fox gave her the lead in Whirlpool, a top-notch thriller. There are a kleptomaniac, a hypnotist, blackmail, and a murder charge in it. Well, sounds like a real spine tingler. Oh, it is. And Jean is wonderful as a wealthy young wife who rebels at living within her husband's income. Who is the lucky man? Richard Conti. But he says he feels a lot safer in man-to-man combat than he does in the love scene. Jean is dynamite on the screen. And a wonderful wife and mother at home. Between takes for Whirlpool, she often sewed or knitted for her two little daughters. She loves detailed handwork. And naturally, when she puts so much time and work into the children's things, she insists they get gentle care. Lux flakes are a standby in her household. That's true of thousands of homes where there are babies and young children. Well, it's especially important to keep their tiny cottons and knitted woolies soft and unshrunken, so they can't chafe or bind. Tiny diamonds of Lux burst into suds so fast, make such rich suds, baby things come out sweet and fresh in a jiffy. And Lux flakes are so gentle... They keep delicate baby pastels lovely looking up to three times as long. It's a shame to let wrong washing methods spoil baby things. Actual washing tests show that colors stay fresh looking up to three times as long with Lux Flakes Care. There is no safer care for baby things than gentle Lux Flakes. We return you now to William Keeley. Act Two of The Bishop's Wife, starring Tyrone Power as Dudley, David Niven as The Bishop, and Jane Greer as Julia. Reliable authorities tell us that the Christmas season is the happiest time of the year. 
but it's anything but that for young Bishop Henry Brown. Determined to build the cathedral, he can't raise the money. And if that isn't trouble enough, he finds his prayers have been answered in the person of a young, handsome, and full-fledged angel named Dudley, who seems to find the bishop's wife a uh, better company than the bishop. I enjoyed lunch very much, Dudley. Why don't you think we'd better go home? Well, I thought you liked to walk. Oh, I do. But... Oh, Dudley, wait. There's a friend of mine. Professor Wadridge. Professor, wait. Julia, what wonderful luck meeting you again. This man. Are you with him? Yes, of course. Dudley, this is Professor Wadridge. Oh, the professor knows me well. The University of Vienna. Young man, I don't believe you've ever been near Vienna. Dudley is Henry's new assistant. You mean you really know this fellow? Of course I do. Well, in that case, how about dropping into my humble diggings for a bit of Yuletide cheer? Oh, I'd huh? love to, but only for a moment. Uh, come along, uh, Dudley. It's just around the corner. Well, Professor, when are you going to show us your book? My book? <laughs> Never. Please. Oh, you're writing a book? You didn't know? You didn't tell me. I described the book in detail in the course of those lectures I gave in Vienna. Julia, I'm now certain this fellow's an imposter. Oh, oh, that book. Oh, I thought you finished that one years ago. Oh. Oh, I see. No, no, for 20 years I've talked about that book, but in all that time I haven't written a word, not one word. But why not? Because I can't think of anything original to say. Just the same old monotonous history, dry as dust. I never could find the right words, either to tell to a pretty girl or to write a book. Even when you had this coin to inspire you? Well, that's the coin you gave to Henry, Professor. Yes, I borrowed it from Henry's desk. And you wasted your time. It's worthless. Oh, on the contrary. This coin is one of the rarest of all antiquities. Only 100 of these coins were minted by Julius Caesar 2,000 years ago. That was when Cleopatra visited Rome. Presumably these coins were used to pay her hotel bill. Why, that's amazing. And nobody knew about it except Caesar's wife, and she had the coins destroyed. But this one she overlooked. It's an unwritten chapter in history, and you, Professor, will write it. Do you know any more stories like that? Oh, any number of them. Oh, you're a curious fellow, Dudley. Have you just begun to notice that? Where do you come from? Well, what if I told you that I come from another planet? Would you believe me? I don't know. I'd believe you, Dudley. And you'd be right, Julia, as always. We all come from our own little planets. That's why we're all different. That's what makes life interesting. Oh, it's getting late. I must be leaving, really. Oh, sorry, Professor. Uh, if my wine bottle wasn't empty, we could say goodbye with another drink. Empty? Oh, yes, I had barely enough for... for the bottle. It's half full. Oh, well, save it for next time, Professor. Uh, I'm really getting old when I can't see what's inside a wine bottle. <laughs> uh, Dudley. Yes, my friend? There's one thing that troubles me greatly. Well? To write a history is a tremendous task. I wonder, will I have time to finish it? You'll finish it. You'll have time. I don't know why I'd ask you that question. How would you know? Yet somehow I believe you. You see, for quite a while now, every time I passed a cemetery, I felt as if I were apartment hunting. <laughs> Goodbye, Professor. Come and see us, please. I will. I will. Goodbye, and God bless you both. I'll pass that recommendation along. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> Now, Bishop, Mrs. Brom and Mr. Dudley. Oh, they are. Well, I hope dinner isn't spoiled, Matilda. Oh, no, sir. I have sort of a feeling they might be late. Very considerate of you. Henry? Good evening, Julia. I'm sorry I'm so late, dear. Oh, hello, Henry. Good evening, Dudley. We had the most marvelous time. Oh, I wish, wish you'd been with us. Yes, I wish I had. Is Debbie asleep yet? She's waiting to see you. Oh, good. I'll go right up. I trust you spent a profitable afternoon, Dudley? Oh, yes. Yes, did you have a profitable afternoon, Henry? Not very. Dudley, I'd like to see you for a moment. I mean, here, in my study. Certainly. Well, this won't take long, but I'd, I'd rather not be interrupted. You'll excuse me if I lock the door. Dudley, I simply cannot go on like this. Can you prove to me that you are an angel? Proof? You mean a, a document? Oh, surely you of all people should know that angels need no passports. I'd be a lot happier if I could see you perform a miracle. Well, what kind? Well, make this desk rise up and fly around the room. Oh, Henry, Henry, please. I I didn't come here to do tricks. I'm surprised at you. I don't believe you are an angel at all. I think you're a demon, right? Henry, no. No, don't say that word. 
Oh. Anyway, now you know how I feel. Yes. Now, wait a minute, Dudley. I'm not through yet. There's another matter. I... The door. I locked that door. Uh, he just opened it and walked out. Dudley! Wait, wait a minute. Dudley! <laughs> now it's locked again. Oh. Dudley! <laughs> Yes, dear, to say goodnight to Debbie. Oh, oh. Anything wrong? Oh, no, 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 nothing. Oh, you, you look very well, Julia. You, very bright and gay. I feel gay, Henry. I think, I think you're an excellent wife, Julia. Why, why, thank you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the well-ordered life we lead, and I want you to know that I think the credit for that is due to you much more than to me. Thank you again, dear. Do you think I'm an excellent husband? Of course, dear. Henry, I hope you're going to take things easier now. I mean, with Dudley here. I think he's very able. You do? Yes. He knows so many things. What, for instance? Well, you should have seen him this afternoon. We met Professor Wutheridge. Why, Dudley knows more about history than he does. He should. He'd been at it longer. What? Oh, nothing. I'll go up and see Debbie now, dear. Don't you know any stories, Mr. Dudley? Oh, I know hundreds of stories, Debbie. I think it would be very nice of you to tell me one. Well... I know a story that happened many, many years ago about a boy who lived in a little town. What was his name? His name was David. He was a shepherd, and the town where he lived was called Bethlehem. Oh, I know Bethlehem. That's where the star was. That's right. Only David lived long before the star. Well, one night David was out in the hills tending his sheep. He was playing the harp and singing. And then all of a sudden, an angel came down and spoke to him. How did David know he was an angel? Oh, he didn't know. And that's the way it always is. Angels come down and put ideas into people's heads, and then people feel very proud of themselves because they think it was all their own idea. Well, anyway, this angel spoke to David. One of your lambs has strayed, he said. So David put aside his harp and went out into the darkness to find the lamb. Of course, the angel guided him. And when David found the lamb, he saw a great ferocious lion there. Oh, dear. So David said to the lion... You get away from that lamb. And the lion said, You get away from me or I'll eat you too. Did David run away? Oh, no. No, the angel put another idea into his head. And David took out his sling and hurled a stone right between the lion's eyes. Served him good and right. Yes, I think it did. And David picked up the lamb and carried it back to the fold. And then he felt so happy that he took his harp and he made up a new song. It started like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He... Oh, come in, Henry. I think you can tell the rest of this. Uh, some other time. Well, good night, Daddy. Good night, darling. Now, if you're ready, Dudley, so is dinner. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. After dinner, Henry, we'll get a taxi and go down to St. Timothy's. St. Timothy's? Tonight? Of course, dear. The choir's rehearsing for the benefit they... Henry, we promised Mr. Miller we'd... Oh, Julia, I, I telephoned Mrs. Hamilton this afternoon. Henry... Yeah, I apologized to her for some of the things I'd said. I had to, and she said I might call on her tonight. But the rehearsal's just for you. A million dollars for Mrs. Hamilton, dear, is far more important. Besides, Mr. Miller will be delighted to see you. You're his bishop, Henry. And besides, I just don't like going alone. Oh, my, uh, my evening seems quite free, Henry. Oh, no, 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 definitely not. You, you've done enough already. Well, I was about to suggest that I see Mrs. Hamilton and you take Julia to St. Timothy's. You and Mrs. Hamilton? Oh, oh, oh no. Well, it's just a suggestion. Dudley, would you mind very much going with me? Julia! Yes, Henry? Well? I think that might be a very good solution. Thank you, Dudley. You're welcome, Henry. Oh, I'm delighted to see you. Hello, Mr. Miller. Oh, yes. this is Mr. Dudley, the bishop's new assistant. Oh, Mr. Dudley, a pleasure. Thank you. The bishop will try to get here later, Mr. Miller. Something important came up. Oh, of course, he's such a busy man. Now. He didn't want to delay rehearsal. And Mrs. Brougham, uh, I'm terribly embarrassed. Uh, look over there. Only two of the boys have come. Oh, it's just too difficult, I suppose, trying to compete with basketball and Christmas. Oh, I wouldn't worry, Mr. Miller. They'll all show up. Hiya, boys. Hi. What do you sing? Me? Oh, first soprano. Any good? I doubt it. Well, how about giving out? You, 
You mean alone? Well, you've got Rupert with you. Hi, Rupert. Hi. Well, what do you say? It's okay by me. Fine. I'll start you off at the piano. <laughs> Look, here comes some of the other ballers. Why, why yes. Maybe basketball isn't so important after all. The stars in the sky looking down. You can be proud of them, Mr. Miller. They sing beautifully. They've never sung so. Never. And look, they're all here now. I don't understand. Oh, if Henry could hear this. Like... Like angels. Better, believe me. I'm so relieved, Bishop Rome. You needn't make any further apologies. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Hamilton. And in view of your generosity, the George B. Hamilton Memorial Chapel shall be located wherever you specify in the new cathedral. Well, now we're getting somewhere, aren't we? Oh, there's another matter. That window depicting St. George and the Dragon. Yes? I should very much like the countenance of St. George to resemble my late husband. Oh. Uh, who do you see as the dragon? Oh. Oh, any dragon. Thank you. Well, now that we're in such complete accord, would you, would you mind very much if we postpone the details? Julia's waiting for me at St. Timothy's. Very well. We can go over the plans when I transfer the funds. Thank you so much. I... Well, that's strange. Is anything the matter? Well, this chair, I can't get up. It's stuck to my... I mean, I'm stuck to it. Stuck to the chair? Yes, it doesn't seem quite right, does it? Stevens! Stevens, come here, please. Yes, madam? There is something wrong with the bishop's chair. Oh, madam, it must be the new varnish. The furniture people should have warned us. I do hope I'm not harming the chair. Oh, this is preposterous. Awkward situation, isn't it? Perhaps you'll give a little pull at the back, Stevens. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Again, please. Oh, you, your trousers, sir. I'm afraid if we pull any more... Mrs. Hamilton, might I use the telephone? Yes, of course. It's right over there. Can you walk? After a fashion. <laughs> that chair, madam, it, it clings to him like a brother. Well, do something, Stevens. Call the shop. Get a plumber. <laughs> Hello? Matilda, uh, this is Bishop Rome. I'm at Mrs. Hamilton's. I want you to come here at once with another pair of trousers. Hmm? Well, what difference does it make? <laughs> Just bring me another pair of trousers. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry this has happened. Oh, if I could only get in touch with Julia or Dudley or... Dudley! This is all his doing. Dudley! No, 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 Bishop, don't be nervous. Uh, have a chair, Bishop. I have a chair. <laughs> Imagine what happened to Henry. He was so sure he'd meet us there. Well, I... Uh, well, I suppose he's detained at Mrs. Hamilton's. Oh, of course. You know, Dudley, it's a strange thing. You seem to be able to make me feel as if everything's going to be all right. Everything could be all right for everyone, Julia. If people would only learn to behave like human beings. It's a lovely night, isn't it? Oh, driver, could you take us through the park, please? But that's out of your way, lady. You getting bored with us, driver? Say, I'll drive you by way of Mexico City if you want me to. That's the trouble with this country. Too many people who don't know where they're going, they want to get there too fast. I call you two very unusual people. Oh, thank you. You're very perceptive. You know your destination, but you're in no hurry to get there. And you're not reluctant to invest an extra four bits for a detour with nothing. Get Oh, oh, that was really a close one. Holy smoke. Did you see the way I missed that truck? Like, like a miracle. Yes, I know, but uh, just don't overplay your hand. Hey, hey, look, they're ice skating over there. Oh, so they are. Julia, we're going ice skating. Oh, no, no, we mustn't. It's too late. We couldn't. Do you really think we could? You can stop here, driver. We're going ice skating. Oh, and you too. <laughs> Well, this is it, Sylvester. What do I owe you? Not a cent, my friend. Want to know why? Because you and the little lady here have restored my faith in human nature. Well, good night, Dudley. Good night, Julia. Good night, Sylvester. Sylvester is a noble soul. 
His children and his children's children will rise up and call him blessed. Oh, this has been the most wonderful evening I've had in years. It's the most wonderful evening I've had in centuries. You're a beautiful skater, Julia. In fact, you're beautiful. Well, well, you've come home. Oh, hello, Henry. Henry, what happened to you? I thought you were going to meet us at St. Timothy's. What happened to you? It's almost ten o'clock. You'll never guess, Henry. We've been ice skating. Ice skating? Yes. You should have seen Dudley. He's marvelous, Henry. Oh, and those boys at St. Timothy's. The way they sang. It was simply heavenly. I'm sure it was. Did you have a successful meeting with Mrs. Hamilton? Quite satisfactory, thank you. Good. I'll be right down, Henry. Dudley? Yes, Henry? Whatever went on these last few hours, there's one thing I'm sure of. Julia is absolutely blameless. Oh, of course she is. But you, you deliberately stopped me from joining you by the seat of my pants. Henry, if you had sent me to represent you with Mrs. Hamilton, I would have gone. But you didn't, so I represented you with your wife. Oh, is that part of the normal duties of, a, of an angel? Well, sometimes, Henry, angels must rush in where fools fear to tread. I haven't the faintest idea what that means, and I don't want it explained to me. In any event... You can go now, Dudley. I have solved my problem. Mrs. Hamilton is giving the money for the cathedral. But that was a foregone conclusion, providing you were willing to make a slight sacrifice of your principles. Now, don't you think it's worth it for this, this glorious edifice? I'm not so sure of its glory at a time like this. Oh, you're not? Now, these are rather lean years for the world, Henry. So many people need food, so, so many need shelter. That big roof could make so many little roofs. I'm dealing with a materialistic, selfish woman. She wouldn't listen to talk like that. Did you try? You came here so that I could have a cathedral. Well, I've got a cathedral. And I want you to get out of my house and out of my life and away from Julia. Suppose you pray for that, Henry. After all, it was prayer that brought me here. Very well. I'll pray. Uh, 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 Henry, I'm afraid that's no prayer. It was right from my heart. I want you to go. Julia doesn't. Julia! Get out. Get out. Julia is about to come down those stairs. Don't let her see you like this, Henry. Try to calm yourself. Dudley? He's gone. Oh, Debbie's awake. She wants to say good night to him. I just told you Dudley is gone. But where? How should I know? But, but why did he leave so suddenly? Because I got rid of him. I told him to go away. I fired him. Why? Because he's incompetent. He's no good at his job, and I cannot stand the sight of him. Henry. Believe me, Juliet, I know what I am doing. <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. a brief intermission, our stars will return with Act Three of The Bishop's Wife. Our special guest tonight is the well-known dress designer of the Samuel Goldwyn Studios, Mary Wills, who's responsible for many of the stunning fashions we see on the screen. What was your latest assignment, Mary? My foolish heart for Mr. Goldwyn. That picture fascinated me so I hated to see them finish it. You know, Susan Hayward is splendid in the highly emotional role of, of a woman who gives everything for love. And Dana Andrews is the man in her life was never better. He's one of my favorites. Yes, their tender love scenes are beautifully done. Miss Hayward took a great interest in the details of her costumes for my foolish heart, especially stockings. She insisted they be very sheer and fit perfectly. And she always insists on Lux flakes to keep them that way, Mr. Kennedy. These tiny diamonds of Lux are the favorite stocking care of a great many stars. We always use them at the studio. They suds wonderfully fast and freshen nylons in a hurry. Besides, we find stockings last much longer. That's been proved by scientific strain tests. Identical stockings rubbed with cake soap or washed with a strong soap went into runs much sooner than those washed with Lux Flakes. The Lux stockings lasted twice as long. Miss Hayward likes to choose a single stocking shade that blends with a variety of costumes and then orders it in quantity. A thrifty idea for a girl on a budget. If one pair is damaged, the odd stocking can always be matched. 
Lux Flakes keep colors truer. Make stockings last longer, too. No wonder over 90% of the makers of stockings recommend Lux Flakes. Here's our producer, Mr. William Keeley. The curtain rises on the third act of The Bishop's Wife, starring Tyrone Power as Dudley, David Niven as The Bishop, and Jane Greer as Julia. Two days have passed since Dudley disappeared, much to the relief of Bishop Henry Brown. And now it's early evening on Christmas Eve. Here's the list of your calls, Bishop, ending at Mrs. Hamilton. Oh, and there's a taxi waiting for you outside. Thank you, Miss Cassaway. If you're through typing my sermon before I'm back, just leave the copies on my desk. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to keep you so late on Christmas Eve. Oh, it's all right, sir. Bishop Brown? Yes? There's still no word from Mr. Dudley. Miss Cassaway, I discharge Mr. Dudley. There's no reason at all to hear from him. Yes, sir. Now, if you don't mind, please tell Mrs. Brown that the taxi is waiting. We can go to the Tropshire's first, Henry, then the Van Gogh. Julia! Hiya, Julia! Sylvester, well, what are you doing here? Well, when the call came in for a cab, I sure hightailed it over here. I was hoping there'd be another skating party. Hey, where's Dudley? I don't know. Look, you got a preacher with you. Yes, uh, this is... A... Don't, don't, don't tell me. A wedding. You and Dudley. Sylvester, this is my husband, Bishop Brown. How do you do? Oh... And now, if you don't mind, we'd uh, like to go to North Maple Street by taxi cab, Sylvester, not ice skates. Good evening, Miss Cassaway. Uh, Mr. Dudley. Did I startle you? Oh, yes, I... I didn't hear you come in. But where have you been? Oh, here and there, Miss Cassaway. Why, we've been so worried about you. And poor Mrs. Brome, she's been popping in and out of here all day. Have I seen you? Have I heard from you? Where is she? She and the bishop are making Christmas calls. Oh, they'll be home. Oh, yes, sir. After Mrs. Hamilton's. Then they go to St. Timothy's for the midnight service. You should be home, too, Miss Cassaway. I'll type that sermon for you. Oh, no, no, the bishop told me... It's Christmas Eve. You should be with your family. Well, if you really... Oh, thank you, Mr. Dudley. Merry Christmas, Mildred. Oh, Merry Christmas, Dudley. <laughs> Henry's Christmas sermon. The new cathedral. Mrs. Hamilton's magnificent gesture. Money. Pledges needed. <laughs> Sorry, Henry, but that's no sermon for Christmas. But suppose you tell them... Suppose you tell them the story... Of an empty stocking. Once upon a midnight clear, there was a child's cry. A blazing star hung over a stable, and wise men came with birthday gifts. We have forgotten many things during the centuries, but not that kind. Is calling, sir. Oh, I'm Dudley Stevens, Bishop Brom's new assistant. Would you mind telling Mrs. Hamilton I'm here? I don't believe she's expecting you, sir. Oh, I'm sure she isn't. Uh, yes, sir. I'll wait in the music room. The music room, sir? Yes, there's a harp in there. Uh, I wonder if she'd mind... Oh, if... I'm afraid she would, sir. Oh. Well, in that event, you'd better hurry off and tell her. Uh, yes, sir, I shall. <laughs> Oh, good evening, Mrs. Hamilton. This is a beautiful harp you have. My, my butler said you told him you're Bishop Brown's assistant. Oh, yes, Mrs. Hamilton. The bishop will be along a little later. That music you're playing. I thought you'd recognize it. There's no one living who knows that composition. Except me. What a shame that Alan Cartwright died. That only you and I would know his music. Alan Cartwright died nearly 40 years ago. You couldn't have known him. I'm much older than you think. Mrs. Hamilton, tell me about him. About Alan Cartwright. What is there to tell? He was the only man I ever loved. But I was afraid of poverty, so he went away and I never saw him again. Why am I telling you this? 
And so you married the rich George Hamilton. I made George happy, I think. And since he died, I've spent a fortune honoring his memory. In empty monuments. How did you know about Ellen Cartwright? It doesn't matter. Mrs. Hamilton, they're at the front door now. Henry and Julia. I can't see them now. Yes, yes, you'll see them. You'll go to the hall and you'll greet them in your usual warm-hearted manner. You come with me and you'll stay, won't you, Doctor? No, no, I'm afraid I can't. I have a great deal of work to do. Oh. Bishop and Mrs. Brom are here, madam. Now, don't keep them waiting. How do you do, Mrs. Hamilton? <laughs> Julia, how nice of you to come and see me. And Henry, Merry Christmas. Uh, Henry, I said Merry Christmas. Oh, yes, m- m- Merry Christmas, Mrs. Hamilton. Oh, and no more of this Mrs. Hamilton business. My name is Agnes, and now we can all... Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's gone already. Gone? Who? Dudley. He was here. I might have known it. But where did he go? Oh, oh, that poor man. He said he had so much work to do. Really, Henry, you must make him take some rest. I'm trying to make him do just that. Oh. Oh, I can't thank you enough for sending him to me. Meeting Dudley? Oh, I know it sounds ridiculous, but... Meeting him has been the greatest spiritual experience of my life. How did you ever find him, Henry? More or less of of an accident, I suppose. Or more or less of a miracle. Oh, it was. It was. Talking with this wonderful, understanding man has... has... Henry, I've suddenly changed my mind about the cathedral. You have? Yes. I'm going to give my money to those who need it. To the poor, the homeless, the unappreciated. And I want you to direct the spending of it. Now you see what Dudley's done, Henry. Yes, I... I see. And you understand. Mrs. Hamilton, Julia, forgive me, but I I have to leave. There's someone I must see immediately. Henry. My dear fellow, sit down, sit down. Professor Wuthering, I, I just had to see you. Yeah, I'm delighted. Here, here, Henry, here. A glass of sherry. No, no, thank you. Oh, but I insist. Henry, you see this bottle? Now, now watch. I fill two glasses. Behold, the bottle is still half full. And what's more, the sherry itself, it stimulates, it warms, it inspires. But no matter how much you drink, it never inebriates, and the contents never diminish. Always half full. Dudley's been here? Yes. <laughs> and that bottle isn't all. He, he told me to look up some ancient text in the library, which no living scholar has ever been able to decipher. I read them as if they were English. Oh, let's face it, Henry. This Dudley fellow is not like the rest of us. He says he's an angel. An angel? That's funny. Nothing stopped me from saying it that time. Angel. He says he's an angel. From... from heaven? That I'm not so sure about. (laughs) An angel. It's too bad. He's such a nice fellow. Oh, he's brought nothing but disaster to me. Oh, that's absurd. He and Julia were here the other day. She seemed happier than she'd been in years. He's made her despise me. Are you sure? That's why I've come to see you. Do you think it's all my own fault, Professor? Oh, you don't have to answer. I asked for this in more ways than one. I suppose that Dudley came to me just to confirm that I had already lost Julia's love. Well, if there's anything I can do, Henry. No, there's nothing anyone can do. Yeah, but there must be. You and Julia love each other. You always have. It's only partly true. I love Julia. Well, then why don't you fight for her? Fight? How can I fight against... But you have a tremendous advantage over him. Advantage over an angel? Precisely. He is an angel. Julia's a creature of earth. She's a woman, Henry, and you're a man. Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah, and <laughs> if I were you, I'd get myself home. Home. That's where he'll be, waiting for Julia. Excuse me. Uh, 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 happy Christmas. <laughs> Henry, is that you, dear? Hello, Julia. Dudley. I came to say goodbye. I have to be moving along. Oh. Well, where will you be going? Wherever they send me. They? My superior officers. Will we ever see you again? Well, they seldom send us twice to the same place, Julia. We might form attachments. I don't know what you're talking about. No, of course not. Julia. Julia, I don't want to leave. Why? 
Well, there are few people who know the secret of making heaven here on earth. And you are one of those rare people. You... You frighten me. Dudley, I think you ought to go. Julia, please, don't send me away. What are you saying? That I'm... I'm tired of being a wanderer. I'm tired of an existence which is neither hot nor cold, hungry nor full. No, no you must go away. And never come back. Don't look at me like that. Dudley, no. Henry, Henry! It's all right, Julia. It's all right, my darling. Go upstairs, dear. I'll handle this alone. As for you, Dudley, I have never before had to fight an angel. But I suggest you take off your coat and put up your dukes. Now, why do you want to fight me, Henry? Because you're a thief trying to steal the love that belongs to me. Henry, do you realize that as an angel, I could quite possibly destroy you with a bolt of lightning? I don't care. Julia means more to me than my life. I'm not going to lose her. Ah. ah. Then I have news for you. I'm going. I'll accept that as a fact when I see it happen. Oh, no, you won't. Because when I'm gone... You will never know that an angel visited this house. And Julia? What about her? There will be no memory with her either. Or with Debbie or the professor or anyone else. Oh, I don't trust you. You may, Henry. Because your prayer has been answered. That's not true. I prayed for a cathedral. No, no, Henry. You, you prayed for guidance. And that's been given to you. I'm being paged. Uh, just a minute, please. Goodbye, Henry. If... If we should need you again, will you come back? No, not I. I'm requesting an assignment at the other end of the universe. Is that because I was so difficult? Oh, no. No, no. This difficulty was in me. When an immortal finds himself envying the mortal trusted to his care, it's a definite signal of danger. Yes, yes, I heard you the first time. <laughs> Now, now go upstairs. Take her in your arms, Henry. And kiss her for me. You lucky Henry. Julia, Julia. Why, darling, you wake Debbie. Are you all right? Oh, yes, of course I am. Henry, did you get that for Debbie? Get what for Debbie? That little angel there on the bed. Why, well, no. I can't imagine where it came from. Henry, Henry, what is it? I don't know. I, I have the most inexplicable feeling of happiness. Or so do I. Oh, Julia, I love you, Julia. I love you, Henry. Listen, the bells from St. Timothy. It's almost midnight. You'll have to hurry. Oh, my sermon, it was all about the cathedral. It will never do now. Don't worry, dear. He'll think of something. Something even better. Merry Christmas, Henry. Merry Christmas, darling. child's cry. A blazing star hung over a stable, and wise men came with birthday gifts. We have forgotten many things through the centuries, but not that night. We celebrated with stars on Christmas trees, with the sound of bells, and with gifts, but especially with gifts. You give me a book, I give you a tie. Aunt Martha has always wanted an orange squeezer, and Uncle Harry could do with a new pipe. Oh, we forget nobody. Adult or child, all the stockings are filled. All that is except one. And we have even forgotten to hang it up. The stocking for the child born in a manger. It is his birthday we're celebrating. Don't let us ever forget that. Let us ask ourselves what he would wish for most. And then let each put in his share. Loving kindness... Warm hearts and a stretched out hand of tolerance. All the shining gifts to make a peace on earth. Our star 
as we'll return to their curtain calls in a moment. Libby, since you gave your prize recipe last week for making Christmas snow, we've been swamped with letters asking us to repeat it. Oh, well, I'm not a bit surprised, John. It's such a novel decoration for a Christmas tree. The branches look as if they were covered with freshly fallen snow. The kids especially have asked about it. You said it was easy. Oh, it is. They can do it without any help from grown-ups. Just add two cups of lukewarm water to a large box of Lux Flakes. Whip with an egg beater until it's the consistency of thick whipped cream. Then spread the mixture on the tree branches with your fingertips. It dries in about an hour. And it lasts as long as the tree. When it's dry, add your lights and ornaments as usual. You can use fewer ornaments, though, because Lux Christmas Snow is a decoration in itself, and so inexpensive. Lux Flakes is another fine product of Lever Brothers. Better order some extra boxes of Lux Flakes tomorrow. You'll want to try Christmas Snow on your table centerpieces, too, and on holly wreaths around the house. Your dealer has printed directions for making Lux Christmas Snow. Remember, just... Two cups of water to one large box of Lux Flakes. Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. Our most sincere thanks are due our stars for the joy they brought to this audience tonight. And here they are, Tyrone Power, David Niven, and Jane Greer. Ty, it's good to have you back in Hollywood after all these months. Well, until you... Until you... Well, I'll try this again. Once more. Until you've been away a year and a half, you never know how good home looks. You know, I was just figuring up the other day. In the last four years, I've only been here ten months. Well, I guess you're, guess you're ready to settle down. <laughs> well, for a, for a few days, David. And then Linda and I are going down to Mexico City to spend New Year's with her family. You travel as much in real life as in the Prince of Foxes. 20th century foxes, that is. Uh, <laughs> nice to know you haven't changed a bit, David. <laughs> well, Ty, you certainly had an exciting role in the picture. And your performance merits our congratulations. And this would be a good time to congratulate Jane on the recent arrival in her family. Two boys must be a household, Jane. Oh, two aren't nearly enough. But I will say the Lux Flakes consumption is running rather high. Well, we certainly can help you out there. There's some in the wings for all of you to take home. We appreciate it, Bill. Now, what about next week's play? It's a gay musical, David. <laughs> the Warner Brothers hit, My Dream is Yours. And the stars will be June Haver and Jack Carson. <laughs> My Dream is Yours is a delightful love story... Full of sparkling songs in just the right mood to top off the Christmas season. That's a wonderful holiday play. Well, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Traditionally, this is the time for an old American custom. Going home for Christmas. It's a time of joyful reunion, a time to strengthen the ties that bind each family together. And in the family is our only hope for the future. For from deep in our hearts and our homes must come the fulfillment of the age-old promise of Christmas, the promise of peace on earth and goodwill among men, all men. of Lever Brothers Company, and of us in the Lux Radio Theater, may I wish all of you the happiest of holidays. And we invite you all to join us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Jack Carson and June Haver in My Dream is Yours. This is William Healy saying good night to you and Merry Christmas. David Niven will soon be seen in the Alexander Corda production, The Elusive Pimpernel. Jane Greer appeared through the courtesy of RKO, producers of Holiday Affair, starring Robert Mitchum and Janet Lee. Heard in tonight's cast were Willard Waterman as Professor, Eleanor Audley as Mrs. Hamilton, Francis Robinson as Miss Cassaway, and Bill Johnstone, 
Gilbert Barnett, Philip Teague, Noreen Gamill, Ann Whitfield, Howard McNear, Eddie Marr, and Alan Reed, Jr. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear My Dream is Yours, starring June Haver and Jack Carson. Screen stars are thrilled with the new bath size Lux Toilet Soap. It's so luxurious, they say, leaves such a lovely clinging fragrance on the skin. Try this big satin smooth bath cake nine out of ten screen stars use. Enjoy its rich creamy lather, abundant even in hard water. In a jiffy, it whisks away dust and dirt, makes you sure of skin that's fresh, really sweet. Fastidious women love the delicate Lux Toilet Soap perfume, an exclusive blend of flower fragrances. Rose, lilac, jasmine are just a few. The generous new bath size Lux Toilet Soap is now available everywhere. Get a few cakes tomorrow. The whole family will enjoy the new bath size Lux Toilet Soap. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of My Dream is Yours, starring Jack Carson and June Haver. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.